there's something quite striking in the preface that is composed for this Feast of the Assumption, which we will pray at the beginning of the Eucharistic prayer. We hear that Mary's Assumption is for us in the church, for us as individual disciples, both the beginning and the image of the perfection that we are called to have in our Christian life. We might think that is a bit strange because if Mary, in fact, is that image in the beginning of the perfection, the model that we should follow, we see that she is a person altogether different from our time. She lived 2,000 years ago, probably had little education, wasn't sophisticated in the ways of the world in terms of modern technology. And yet there is something about her that we are to attend to. If we look at her life, we see that it is a life of simplicity. It's a life that is uncomplicated, a life in many ways that also speaks of serenity and inner peace. We see that in the way that she accepts the message of the angel Gabriel, that she would be the mother of the Lord. But also the moment in which Jesus seems to in some way disregard her request at Cana. And when he says, what does this have to do with me? And she says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And that at the foot of the cross, Mary as well is someone who's not historically hysterical in the way that she looks at the uh, crucifixion. She takes all of these things and treasures them in her heart. And so maybe as we think about our very fast-paced life, our hyperactive life, ways that can be so complicated, we need someone like Mary to once again center us about what is really important, an individual who helps us gra grab a hold of the serenity and peace that the Lord does want us to have. A couple of things as we look at this gospel text. The first thing is that we notice that after Mary receives a message that she's going to be the mother of God, she doesn't throw a big party. She doesn't think of herself. In fact, she goes up to the hill country in order to help her cousin Elizabeth. And she speaks in a way that calls out the best in Elizabeth to the point where her, her heart leaps as the child leaps in her womb as a cause for joy. So often in life I have seen parents, new, especially new parents, and the way that they have to forget themselves uh, show little interest in what they need because they're caring for that child. And there is a serenity and peace that comes over them. Uh, life in all of its complication doesn't seem to erode their sense of peacefulness because they're being generous in the way that they give. So often in life, we're able to deal with the lack of peacefulness in life that comes in being so interested in ourselves when we begin to show interest in other people. So Mary tells us today that we are able to find peace in our lives if we have a kind of a self-forgetfulness, that we don't become so preoccupied with ourselves, but that we look for the needs of others. Therein lies serenity and peace. The second thing that we notice about Mary is that she finds joy in so many things. It's easy in our life to complain about things, to, to see what's wrong in other people. We know that in society today, people who serve us in a variety of ways, from police to the priest, to those who are in elected office, to those who uh, are public servants, it's easy to take uh, a critical eye towards what they do for us and see where maybe there are shortcomings. Mary encourages us today to find joy in the good things that people do in society today to make sure that we don't come with a hypercritical attitude towards other people, but we find joy in the way that God's working in so many different people that serve us each and every day. And finally, we hear at the end of the reading that Mary returns home, and that's what the assumption is all about. Mary, in fact, helps us understand that God is redefining death. Death is not the end point, but death is a place where the Lord transforms our life so that we come home. Death does not belong to us to be used as vengeance, retribution, ways in which we punish people or declare wars. Death belongs to God, and God takes death and transforms it so that it is about our coming home as we see Mary in the gospel do on this Feast of the Assumption. 
So today, as we think about our very complicated lives, of all the things that preoccupy our attention, Mary is one who reminds us today that when we have a self-forgetfulness and care for others, we in some way allow ourselves to find a real peace and serenity. Whenever we find joy in the things of life and put aside a voice of criticism and complaint in our hearts, again, we find peace and serenity. And also, when we look upon death, not as something that belongs to us, but belongs to God. And when it belongs to God, he uses it and transforms it to bring us home. Mary does have a lot to say to us. She, in fact, on this Feast of the Assumption, is one who is the beginning, but also the image of the way to perfection in which we are all called. And that's why, as we hear in the Gospel today, we and all generations call her blessed.